Hi everyone, my name is Brenda and today I'm going to talk about gestational diabetes and how to manage it with your diet. So when you eat, your body breaks down the foods into a form of energy called glucose and glucose is the simplest form of sugar. The glucose goes into your blood and the blood sugar rises and insulin is a hormone um, made by your pancreas and it helps you move this glucose from your blood into your body cells so your body can use it for energy. So gestational diabetes is associated with increased risk of birth defects, miscarriage and a large baby which can cause a heart delivery. So the goals for um, managing gestational diabetes is to have a well-controlled blood glucose level as women who have had gestational diabetes have a high rate of type 2 diabetes later in life. First of all, you should eat a well-balanced diet as it should not entail a low calorie intake and any weight gain restriction. Also, low carb diet will reduce baby's fuel source and you'll become ketogenic which will cause birth defects. So to introduce a concept uh, named the glycemic index, it's a relative ranking of carbohydrates in foods according to how they affect the blood glucose level. Choosing whole grain options such as brown rice or whole wheat bread and pasta helps with controlling your blood sugar better because it generally has lower glycemic index. And glycemic index is important to consider for carbohydrate absorption but we still have to consider the portion sizes in order for the whole picture uh, for blood glucose management. So we should also pay attention to portion sizes of the carbohydrates like pasta, rice, bread, your fruits, starchy vegetables, and how many servings of carbohydrates you should eat depends on your daily calorie intake. And usually it's within three to six servings per meal, one to two servings for your snack, and you should definitely discuss this with your dietitian for better planning. And starchy vegetables such as potatoes, corns, peas, yams are often overlooked as carbs usually and half cup of these counts as one serving of carbohydrates. So what does not affect your blood sugar? You can fill up your plate with non-starchy vegetables. You can load up on these if you still feel hungry as they are loaded with essential vitamins, minerals and antioxidants without having to add excessive calories on your plate. Besides that, fiber also helps you with slowing down digestion rise to lower sugar peak. Nextly, protein foods such as egg, chicken, fish, tofu and beef will also not affect your blood sugar. So fats such as oil, butter, nuts, cream, cheese, this will not affect your blood sugar but you have to be aware of excessive intake due to a high fat content of these for a healthy heart. And exercises also decreases insulin resistance to move your blood sugar out of your circulation. And remember to stay active for at least 30 minutes every day and definitely walking counts too. After your baby is born, your blood sugar will likely go back to normal and you should continue reducing your risk by staying at a healthy weight, exercising regularly and keeping up with a balanced diet. And have your blood sugar tested at least once a year or as directed by your doctor. That's all for today's sharing. Um, see you next time.